All right, what's going on? Let's take a look at evaluating one-sided limits. In this video, we're just going to look at uh, polynomials, rational functions. I'll have a separate video where I'm doing one side limits with uh, trig functions and logarithms, so you may want to check that one out. And then I'll have a video where we're doing one sided limits uh, using a when we give when we're given a graph. All right, so in on here we have uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left. Well, the way we write that is the limit of f of x as x approaches a. And then, I, I don't know if you can see this real good, but right here, there's a little minus sign there. And that means we're approaching a from the left. And then, if we're taking the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right, well, this is the limit of f of x as x approaches a. And then this is from the right. Okay, the plus sign there. And, you know, and we get some number L. Or if the limit does not exist, we could get something besides that. You know, we could get infinity, negative infinity, it does not exist. Okay. So I've got four examples here. So let's go ahead and, and get started. Uh, so in the first problem, we got the limit of x plus 3 over x plus 2 as x approaches 2 from the left. Now, we can do what we do with the other limits. You know, like if we were doing the limit as x approaches 2. We can just plug this in. So, for the first problem, if I'm working it, that's just going to be, well, let's just plug the 2 in. So, that's going to be 2 plus 3 over 2 plus 2 which gives me 5 over 4. And there's my limit. So, see, it can be, it can be that easy. All right. So, let's take a look at the next one. Uh, we've got the limit of x minus the square root of x over x minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the left. All right. So, for this problem... Let's plug the 1 in. Well, what happens if I plug 1 in? I get 1 minus the square root of 1 over 1 minus 1, and that gives me 0 over 0. Okay, So that's an indeterminate form. And what we do when we get 0 over 0, we need to try something else. Okay, So what we're going to do here is we, we look at the, at the numerator. Okay, so the numerator, I've got a radical here. So one of the first things that pops into my mind when I see that radical is, let's try rationalizing the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the limit as x goes to 1 from the left of x minus square root of x over x minus 1, and I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the numerator. Okay, and so that's going to give me the limit as x goes to 1 from the left. Okay, now remember x minus square root of x times x plus square root of x, that's a minus b times a plus b. So that's just what? a squared minus b squared. So that is going to give me x squared minus x. See, this squared minus this squared. So x squared and then the square root of x squared is just x. And that's going to be over x minus 1 times x plus the square root of x. All right. And so I'm taking this limit here. And so that's going to give me the limit as x goes to 1 from the left. Now, notice up here in the numerator, I can factor out x. So that's going to give me x times x minus 1 over x minus 1 times x plus square root of x. 
And then if you notice here, the X minus ones cancel out. Okay. And that's going to leave me with the limit as X goes to one from the left of X over X plus square root of X. All right. Now let's try plugging the one in. So that's going to give me one over one plus square root of one, which that's going to be one over. And this is one square root of one is one. So one plus one is two. And so that limit is one half. All right. Now let's take a look at the next problem. All right. So for number three, let's see what we've got here. So let's plug the three in. So if I do that, I'm going to get three squared plus nine over three minus three, which that's going to give me 18 over zero. And we know when we have zero in the denominator, that's undefined. We don't have zero over zero. So this, this limit here actually does not exist. Okay. But let's not put does not exist. It doesn't exist. And I, so, but I want to know, does it go to infinity or does it go to negative infinity? What does it do? What does this function do? As, it, as it's approaching 3 from the right. All right. So the, I think the best way to look at this is let's just look at this on a number line. So here's 3, okay? And I'm coming into 3 from the right-hand side. So if I'm plugging numbers in, I'm plugging in numbers like 3.1, 3.01, 3.001, and you know, I can get even closer, 3.00001, okay? But just, you know, just getting closer and closer to 3 from the right, all right? Now, let's look at this. If I plug in, say, 3.1, and I square that, I'm going to get something close to 9. And then that's going to give me something close to 18 when I, if I add those together. And, and notice the closer and closer I get to 3 from the right, this, this term up here, this numerator, it's pretty much going to be 18. Okay? But look at the denominator. So in the denominator, so we see that the numerator is pretty much going to be 18. But what about the denominator? Well, if I plug in, let's just say 3.01. Well, 3.01 minus 3 is what? 0 0.01. And what if I plug in 3.001? That's going to give me something pretty close to 18. It's not, you know, going to be much, much off from 18. But that'll give me 0 0.001 in the denominator. Okay? If I do the 3.001 minus 3. And then if I go, if I keep going, you know, just keep adding a 0 and then tacking a 1 on. Well, you know, when I get down to this one, I'm going to end up with this minus 3. That's going to give me what? 0 0.000. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One. That's going to give me something like this. So, do you see what's happening to these fractions as I'm getting closer and closer to 3 from the right? Well, the, the denominator is getting really, really small, and the numerator is pretty much staying where it is. So that means these fractions here, they're going to infinity. Okay? So what, we'll, what we can say is that this limit is going to infinity. And then, of course, you would have the same argument if you were going coming in to 3 from the left. Okay, if you were coming in to 3 from the left, well, what would be the only difference? Well, we would be coming in from, from the left-hand side this way with numbers like, what, 2.9, 2.99, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.
2.9999 and so on. And all that's going to do is when we plug this in, this numerator's still going to stay around 18. But what's going to happen down here? Well, it's just these are going to be negative, right? And so what does that mean? Well, that means that this limit would be going to negative infinity. Okay. All right. So let's look at the at the last example we have here. All right. So we've got the limit. We want to find the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the left and the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the right. And here's our function. f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 1 if x is less than negative 1 and it's equal to x squared plus 2x if x is greater than or equal to negative 1. All right. So, well, oh, sorry about that. So let's look at this. So if I want to do the limit as x goes to negative 1 from the left. All right, so that means, see, if you look up here, negative 1, if we're coming in from the left-hand side, that, that means the values that we're coming in with are less than negative 1. Well, up here in this function here, where are the values less than negative 1? Well, that's for this one. Okay, so this limit right here would equal the limit as x goes to negative 1 from the left of 1 over x minus 1. We would be using this function because this is for negative values. And so this would be 1 over negative 1 minus 1 which that would give us negative one half. Okay. Now let's come in from the right. So that's the limit as X goes to negative one from the right. We're going to do this one now. All right. Of F of X. Okay. So that means we're coming in from the right hand side. So that means we're coming in with values that are greater than negative 1. Well, which function does that apply to? Well, that's that's this one right here. Okay, see these are where the x values are larger than negative 1. And so this would be the limit as x goes to negative 1 from the right of x squared plus 2x. And so we can just plug the negative 1 in. So that's negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1. And that's going to give me what? 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. And there's your answer to that one. All right. So hope the video helped. Like I said, check out the other video on the trig functions and the logarithmic functions on one-sided limits. Uh, I hope it helped. Uh, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.